Hello! This video is a beginner guide to Flight of Nova VTOL operations, hovering, stopping, and landing. Now, the topic is going to be a little bit more beginner friendly than some of the other guide videos that I've put out, but it seems to me like there's uh, an uptick of people asking for this sort of advice lately, and so I thought I would put out a, a little video, hopefully that could be helpful for anybody who's having trouble with that sort of um, the aspect of the game, the, the hovering VTOL landing. Uh, and of course it's something that you do all the time. It's sort of one of the most basic skills that you have to be able to do all the time in the game, and if you can't do it then you really can't play the game. So here's my um, just a few steps uh, that I think will help most people learn how to hover and, um, and do VTOL operations. So the first thing that I should mention is that there's a whole conversation about controls and control schemes that you can have, and this video is not going to talk about that at all. So the only thing I will mention is that if you're on keyboard, you should look up thrust lock and figure out how that works because it is pretty much mandatory if you're going to be using this on a keyboard or on a controller that does not have uh, an access analog access bound to the throttle. So if you want to use a Xbox controller with the throttle bound to the, the bumper keys or something like that, then you also should look up thrust lock. But anyway, that's uh, just my little quick aside about controls. I'm not going to talk anymore about controls. What I'm going to talk about is hovering. So if you have no experience hovering at all, and you're having trouble with it, the first thing I'd recommend is doing what I just did, come out into the middle of nowhere, where there's no uh, buildings or anything, or cliffs or canyons to fall off of. And the first thing you can do is just practice going up and then stopping. And you notice when I say stop, I'm still moving to the side. But look where it says VS in the middle of my screen. There's an arrow pointing to the right that has a little number that's going up and down. I'm trying to keep that number relatively close to zero. It doesn't matter if you keep it exactly on zero, like somewhere between negative one and one is pretty good, usually. And, um, <coughs> that is how fast you're moving up and down only. It doesn't take into account your left, right, forward, or back motion. It just is your, it's your vertical speed is what that VS is. So that gets uh, referred to as the VSI. And that's available um, in this view as well, although since I have the control input displayed, it's kind of covering it up. So I'm going to go back into the cockpit view. Um, and my recommendation is, even if you think you can do this pretty well, if you're having trouble landing, just go and get some muscle memory for this. And again, it doesn't matter whether you're pointing left or right or up and down or whatever. In fact, you might even just push the stick randomly and try to recover from that so that your vertical speed is about zero. And all you're trying to do is just get some muscle memory for keeping that number at zero. And I'd recommend doing this for quite a while until you're really comfortable doing it without even really paying attention. In fact, maybe until you can do it without looking at the vertical speed indicator. Just look outside for a while and don't pay attention to that vertical speed indicator and then maybe look back every now and then to confirm that you're still okay. But you should have that muscle memory of being able to basically hover. Now the second part, the second step is to introduce lateral motion. So you're never going to immediately, like, you know, right away have a fine control over this lateral motion. So you're going to go everywhere, and that's fine. 
It doesn't matter whether you have fine control over it. The idea is just to go in some direction while keeping roughly zero vertical speed, right? So it's fine if you kind of go to the left and right a bit. It's fine if you run into a mountain even. It doesn't matter. Just try to keep zero vertical speed for a while. And then here is uh, the first um, the first component of landing. If I'm moving forward and I'm keeping zero vertical speed, how do I stop? Well, the obvious answer is you point the rocket engines forward, right? The, you point the rocket engines forward to stop. But have you considered that there are multiple ways to do that? The obvious way to do it, that I think most people are probably going to pick up on initially, is to pitch up like this. And now if you do that, you can still continue watching the vertical speed indicator to make sure that you're slowing down while not crashing into the ground or flying up into the air or something. So that's something that you can do, but I would argue that that's not the best way to stop. And the reason is that if you stop that way, you're making it really difficult for yourself to see anything. A better way to stop, um, assuming you have a target in mind, is to turn 90 degrees so that you're going 90 degrees to the airflow and then pitching to the left or the right until the motion of everything in the background stops. So now I've mostly stopped myself and you, <laughs> while I was doing that I was being careful to point my boresight indicator at the horizon line there on the HUD to make sure that I didn't, you know, introduce a, a sideways motion too much. So the second step of my uh, sort of plan here, or of my uh, curriculum, is that you just get used to moving forward like that. Try to keep your vertical speed mostly at zero, but get some motion in some direction, and then pick a landmark just some point on the ground, it doesn't matter. And try to stop in line with that weight mark. Again, it doesn't matter if you end up going back and forward relative to it. Just try and practice doing that with some weight mark that you selected in advance. So you've got to stay zero vertical speed, pick a landmark, and I'm picking that sort of black patch on the ground over there, and just stop relative to it. And then, once you've got used to doing that, now you can finally move on to trying to land on buildings. Now, how does what I just showed you um, translate to landing on a building? Well, the answer is that the easiest way to land a ship that operates in three dimensions with six degrees of freedom is to worry about one of those dimensions at a time. And so what I'm going to... Uh, argue is that the easiest way to land is to worry about your forward motion first and you can do that by looking at this prograde vector the blue circle with the up left and right lines some people might call it a flight path vector or flight path indicator or something else but I'm used to calling it a prograde vector so I'm gonna keep calling it that and you point it sort of next to your target. Not right on top of your target, but next to it. And the reason for that will become obvious in a second. And then you use your rudder to point your actual facing of the ship, this 
foresight indicator towards the prograde vector. And then, and you'll get kind of a feel for when you should do this, but you just practice. When you get close, turn to the left or right as appropriate, to the place you want to land, and just use that technique that you practiced to stop yourself relative to it. And you can see that doing that makes it pretty easy to hover right over the top. Now, of course, I didn't stop, I didn't land, but just practice doing that first. You don't have to try and land, just practice uh, lining up with the target so you can kind of get far away. It doesn't matter how you do this. Just get far away. Somewhere different from where you were before. And then go through those steps. Point the prograde vector kind of next to the target that you want. Next to the target that you want. And then let yourself drop down so that you're around the same height as the target. Start hovering as you practiced before, hovering forward, pointing your foresight indicator in line with the prograde indicator, and just maintain your altitude, and when you get close enough, turn and stop yourself in line with it. And once you get used to doing that, you can finally do the very last part of it, which is just use your bank left and right to keep that prograde vector over the top of your target. And instead of flying over it, point up and watch that speed on your left. And since you eliminated all the other dimensions, that speed on your left is just the speed that you're going directly forward. And so when that gets to zero, then you know that you can pitch back down and you'll be over the top of your target. Now again, that's not going to be perfect your first try. So you could potentially try practicing just that part a few times. But eventually, the idea is that you can uh, use all of that muscle memory that you built up in stages to do a full landing and use each one of those steps one after a time, or one after the other, one at a time. And I guess the point uh, that I'm trying to make is the whole process of landing isn't just one piece of muscle memory. It's like multiple pieces of muscle memory that build on top of each other. And trying to build it all at once is really difficult. But building that muscle memory one step at a time is a lot easier. And so if you understand the breakdown of what you need to do, in what order, you can practice these steps by themselves 
without having to worry about failing one of the other steps first. And only move on to the next part of the process once you're confident in your muscle memory um, of the earlier parts. And once you've built all of those layers of muscle memory, you should be able to land like that every single time, 100%. And it's not even difficult. But actually it is really complex what your brain is doing. It's just that it will do it automatically. Anyway, that was a, a beginner guide to Flight of Nova landing. Hope that that was useful. If it was, let me know. And good luck.